What's up guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video we're going to be building the pay-per-view card for the UFC's return to England. Obviously Dana White yesterday had an interview with TNT Sports and he revealed that they will be going back to England this year and it will be a pay-per-view card and the rumour is that it's going to be in July. So I took it upon myself to make a card. I made a stacked pay-per-view card with 14 fights, two title fights and a bunch of other fun matchups on there as well. So we're going to go through every fight on there and yeah let's go have some fun with this the main event leon edwards versus bilal muhammad um yeah so that's what we're going to be going with as the main event obviously i think this is a pretty obvious fight to make i would have liked to see it happen sooner i kind of wanted them to just get it out the way and then we could have seen you know leon versus like shavkat later in the year or leon versus someone else later in the year but because he didn't end up fighting on 300, we then have to wait a while to see him back in there. So regardless, this is the fight to make. Um, obviously, all uh, all respect to Bilal. Obviously, we have our we we joke about him on this channel, but I'll respect the man. He's definitely uh, done enough to earn a title shot. So I'm going to give him a title shot. Um, and obviously, anywhere else, this is not going to be a pay-per-view main event or pay-per-view even. Like, this was in talks for a pay-per-view co-main event for 300, and even people were saying that they didn't want that. Um, so yeah, at least in London, at least you've got, or not in London, sorry, in Manchester, um, or in England, wherever they put it, at least you do have Leon Edwards there. And so it doesn't really matter. He can be fighting Bilal. He can be fighting anyone. If you've got Leon in the UK, it doesn't really matter who's the opponent. So yeah, I say make this fight happen as the pay-per-view main event for this card. Five rounds, obviously. I think Leon would win. I would pick him to win this fight, but it would be pretty competitive. And uh, I think it would be interesting because, you know, the crowd there in England, they definitely get behind Leon. But Leon's not some massive star, even in England. Uh, like when he fought Usman the first time, like they were obviously, or so in England the third time, um, they were obviously supporting him, but it wasn't like crazy. It wasn't like a fucking, I don't know, Cyril Gunn in Paris or something like that. It wasn't like a Volkanovsky in Australia. Like Leon just doesn't have that same kind of effect. So obviously it's Bilal, so you could put anyone up against Bilal and in any place of the world and still going to be favoured. Um, unless you put like Natan Levy up against Bilal and did it in Gaza. Um, maybe not then. But apart from that, I just don't think anyone else is not going to be the fan favourite over Bilal. So yeah, make this fight happen. Pay-per-view main event, five rounds. I reckon it would be a decent fight. I think there's kind of like a... There's like this narrative going around that this fight would just absolutely stink. I actually think stylistically it would end up being fun. Because these guys already fought before. And that's the thing. Bilal to win needs to like push forward, push an offensive like game plan, mix in the wrestling a little bit. And then Leon... Because Bilal does leave himself pretty open on the feet sometimes. So I reckon we saw how they matched up the first time. I do think this is a bit different to a Colby Covington type of fight. Um, where And I don't think Bilal's going to just show up and bitch it like Colby and just refuse to fight. So make it happen. I think it's not going to be a barn burner, but I think this would end up actually being a relatively fun fight. Uh, so yeah, let's move on to the co-main event. Tom Aspinall versus Curtis B -B -B Blades. Uh, just... Had to put that in there. Um, but, you know, this is definitely the fight to make for sure. Dana White even said in the um, in that interview that he did yesterday, he said, he said, I have two UK champions. He did not say I have one champion and I have an interim champion. He said, I have two UK champions. I have a UK heavyweight champion. So, yeah, it's almost like Dana kind of recognizes that Tom is sort of like like champion A compared to champion B, I guess, with him and Jones. Like, I honestly don't even consider him like an interim champion. Realistically, John Jones, his belt is fraudulent. Like, he beat Cyril Garn, who was coming off a fucking win over who? Tai Tuivasa. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? So, John Jones, let's not act like he fucking beat the champion to get the title. So, to anyone saying, oh, Aspinall, there's no way he would be... He's not the champion. He didn't beat anyone. I mean, yeah, sure. But Jones also did not beat a heavyweight champion to get the belt. So whatever. Um, but on the matchup, Aspinall versus Blades, I think this will be a really fun fight. I think um, it, just like with all Aspinall fights, is bound to end quickly. Um, I think he would probably finish Blades unless Blades just uses his Mateus Gamrot powers and just explodes Aspinall's knee again. Uh, but if all, went, if all goes well, 
If nothing fluky happens, I do predict Aspinall would beat Blades. Blades got ragdolled by Almeida. I think Aspinall could even wrestle Blades, but I think he would elect to just stand up. We saw how Blades dealt with um, Pavlovich, who was just a quicker striker with way more power than him. And I think Aspinall would do a similar thing, just catch him down the middle and put him away. So yeah, this will be a great fight, but make it the co-main event. I don't even care if you do it at the main event. If they just want to say, fuck you, Bilal, we're not putting you in the main event. That'd be kind of funny. Um, but yeah, two title fights, interim, so they probably wouldn't do the interim title fight on top of the normal title fight, but regardless, make it happen, it would be a great fight. Let's move on though to the next fight. MVP Michael Venom Page versus Jeff Neal. I know a lot of people are going to be confused by this because everyone's everyone under the sun is basically saying to do MVP versus Stephen Thompson, and I get it, but I'm being realistic. Those two don't want to fight each other. Like, I swear to God on like 20 different occasions, both of them have said they don't want to fight each other, they're friends, um, and yes, that matchup would be cool, it would be a very interesting stylistic fight, but I think there's a really good chance that just ends up being a fucking karate point fight, and you know, MVP jumps in and throws a, a kick to the body, and then Wonderboy, they do, they bounce around for a little bit, and then Wonderboy comes in and lands a right, like, I feel like that fight would be shit, um, so I get it, and I know why you want to do it, but... Uh, Jeff Neal is ranked number 10, MVP's number 13, Stephen Thompson's number 9, so he's gone down a bunch in the rankings, so it's not even like you're giving MVP a big jump up anyway, um, it's only one spot ahead, so I think you do Jeff Neal, um, if they can't do the Thompson fight, I know he said he wants to fight Ian Gary too, I want them to go down the Colby route, with that do Colby versus Ian Gary, um, why would you do Ian Gary versus MVP, like Ireland versus England? You want to have at least one of those guys to maybe be able to fight Leon in the future, because you could do a massive fight in the UK with that. But if you make them both fight each other, one of them loses, and then the other one's probably going to lose down the line anyway. So at least with the, if you've got two of them, you can kind of double your chances of getting another UK guy to fight Leon Edwards. Um, but... Back on this fight, Jeff Neal versus MVP, I think it'll be a fun fight. I do think MVP would win. I think we kind of saw that, like Kevin Holland, I'm not saying he's a good fighter. Like he's literally mid as hell. Um, and sometimes he just chooses to not fight because um, it's his weird little coping mechanism that he does. He just uh, he just kind of zones out of fights and says, you know what, I'm kind of losing. So let's not just go back and forth and have a war. I'll just I'll just be one step behind the whole time, and I won't get smoked, but I'll just be one step behind. That's the same thing that happened here. It's the same thing that happened against fucking Jack Della Maddalena as well. Yeah, he just doesn't even care half the time. So, Kevin Holland, fuck you, even though you're not even in this video. Um, But yeah, Jeff Neal versus MVP. Get some black-on-black crime. I don't know why I mentioned that um, in the spirit of my last video, you know, if you saw that. Um, But yeah, make this fight happen. I would pick... Uh, MVP to win, but I do recognise Jeff Neal's a better striker than Kevin Holland at this stage of their career, and he could catch him, but I do think it would probably end up pretty similar to the Ian Gary-Jeff Neal fight, but just with a bit more output from the side of MVP compared to Ian Gary. Uh, but let's move on to the next matchup. Arnold Allen versus Giga Chikadze. This is the fight to make, and this is the fight that I do think is being made. And look, I wouldn't have minded seeing like an Arnold Allen versus a Barboza, or versus a Josh Emmett, or vice versa for Giga Chikadze, but this is the fight they've gone with, um, so that's what's going to be happening, it's not confirmed, it's not uh, guaranteed, but it is in the works, I've got multiple sources, you know, I'm, I'm a very reliable uh, member of the MMA YouTube space, I've got multiple sources that are giving me the rundown on the fights being made, and this is one of them, so we should be expecting to see this announced in the next couple of days, probably, uh, Arnold Allen versus Giga Chikazi, and it's a good fight, number six versus number nine in the rankings, Allen's coming off two losses, so he definitely does need to fight down, for sure, I like him, and I do think there's an argument that he beat Movzar, um, but, on paper, you've lost two, you're ranked number six, Giga's coming off a win, you do have to fight down, and Giga kind of deserves to fight up, I guess, um, but I would definitely pick Arnold Allen after that Kata fight, uh, compared to see how both of them did against Kata, I know obviously Arnold Allen, uh, that fight was short-ended because Kata got injured, but to see Kata piece the fuck out of Giga Chikadze over five rounds and beat him up, uh, compared to Arnold Allen, who looked like he was definitely the better fighter on the sh- uh, in the stand-up, I would definitely pick Allen to win. I also think Giga's just not as good as he was even before that fight. He had a bunch of momentum, and then after that fight, he came back, 
He fought Alex Caceres, who's not all that good. I mean, he won, but it wasn't a crazy fight. Then he was going to fight Josh Emmett, and I was going to pick him, and then he pulled out. And then in hindsight, I don't know. I actually don't know if he would win. Like, I think he would because he is pretty quick, but I think Allen is actually quicker because I do think Arnold Allen's one of the faster guys at 145. So I would pick Allen to win a decision, but this is a great fight. You get Arnold Allen on the card. He's obviously English, and yeah. Giga would hopefully lose and we could get another big win for the English people on the card. But let's move down to the main card opener. Is fucking Paddy Pimlet, lad. I'm fighting fucking Hanato Moicano. Um, yeah, so this is the fight to make. Paddy Pimlet versus Hanato Moicano. Obviously, uh, Money Moik is fighting at 300 against Jalen Turner. I do think he's going to lose, to be honest. Um, unfortunately, it would be great to see him win because Jalen Turner, you know, not a big fan of his kind. Uh, all jokes aside, I'm talking about weight bullies. Obviously, not any race type of kind. Of, people that cut weight uh, too much to make weight. That, that's the kind of people I'm talking about. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. I uh, don't like Jalen Turner, so I hope he loses. But I do think he is going to win stylistically. I don't like to fight for Moicano. But that's 300 uh, around, when is it, 13th of April. This card is, I'm hearing, 27th of July. So that would be about just over about three and a half months. So even if he did lose, even if he did get finished, um, you know, he took a bit of damage against Doba, and that was in February, and he's still come back to fight just over two months later. So I think Moikana could stay on an active schedule, and even if he does lose, unless he gets just flatline KO'd and just beaten up badly or breaks an arm, I think he would be good to turn around for this card. And it would be how many? Like, it would be around like 13, 14 weeks after 300. So I think that's enough time. Take a bit of time off and then get back in there with like an eight-week camp. Take a month off, get back in there with an eight-week camp. I think that'd be fine. Um, and Paddy Pimlet's got to be on this card. I want to see him put on the pay-per-view too because I don't think he's ever actually been on a pay-per-view in England. He hasn't because uh, the first, when he was on the rise before he got fraud checked by Jared Gordon, um, I mean, we all knew he was shit, but before he fought Gordon, he fought like two of those guys on the fight nights and then um he couldn't make it to he couldn't fight on because then he fought Gordon in December and he couldn't fight on the pay-per-view in March because he broke his foot and then he came back and obviously fought Tony so yeah this would be the first time Paddy's fighting on pay-per-view and he's probably gonna get a ranked opponent finally you know he's literally got the second longest win streak at lightweight right now like, I swear to God, that's factually correct. Out of everyone at Lightweight right now, apart from Makachev, he's got the second longest win streak, which is nuts because he's shit. Um, but, yeah, he's going to get a ranked opponent. Hopefully, can they please stop giving him cans? Uh, but, yeah, do Moicano. I don't mind, like, an RDA fight. I don't mind the winner of um, uh, Jim Miller, Bobby Green, or the loser. I don't really care. Um, yeah, any of or Drew Doba, but I do, or Bunar St. Denis would be fantastic because I want to see Paddy get smoked. Um, but regardless, put him against anyone from 15 to 10 in the rankings and they can open up the main card of this pay-per-view and that would be a sick fight. Let's move on though to the prelim headliner. Nathaniel Wood versus Yusuf Salal. I think this is a great fight to make. Obviously, Nathaniel Wood is British. You got to get him on there. Uh, he's coming off a loss, I'm pretty sure, to, uh, what's his name? Mohamed Naimov, uh, it was, he got cheated a bunch in that fight. Naimov kept grabbing his gloves and shit. So yeah, dirty rat Naimov. Uh, but regardless, uh, Yusuf Zalal coming off a great win over Billy Quarantillo. Nathaniel Wood needing to get back in there. This would be a great fight. Nathaniel Wood's British, obviously. Um, what's his name? Nath- uh, Yusuf Zalal's from Morocco. It's not in Europe, obviously. It's in Africa, but it's actually not that far away if you think about it. Um, so yeah, I'd say he could even get a couple fans that would come over probably to England to watch him fight. This would just be a good fight to be on the prelims of this card. But let's move on to the next fight. A.V. Grant versus Chris Gutierrez. This is a fight that I thought of. Uh, look, I'm not set on this one. You could do... I, I don't think Davy Grant super deserves like a higher ranked guy because Gutierrez was recently ranked. He's not anymore. Uh, but he was ranked not too long ago. But that was only because he beat Frankie Edgar. But apart from that, he fucking kind of got schooled by Pedro Munoz. Um, and then he got schooled by Song Yudong. So, yeah. And in between that, he just beat some Chinese dude. So, yeah. I don't even think Gutierrez is that good. So, I think this actually be a pretty competitive fight. Gutierrez is not a super young guy either. 
Uh, not like a veteran by any means. David Grant's a veteran, but I also don't mind like a Hayoni Barcelos fight for David Grant, one of those kind of guys, like an older dude. Um, but this would be a fun fight. I think the kicks and the striking, it would just be a good striking match. So yeah, make it happen. Let's move on though to the next fight. Molly McCann versus Sam Hughes. You got to get Molly McCann on the card. I just picked a random bum, unranked women's strawweight for her to fight. Sam Hughes was the one. You know, they both look extremely like those, the typical British lesbian kind of look just that weirdly ugly like slightly masculine facial structure I guess um so yeah make this fight happen and the winner the winner of it can maybe fight a ranked opponent especially if it's Molly McCann and the loser if it's Sam Hughes probably gets cut from the UFC and then she can go back to um you know her her loving lesbian relationship but let's move on to another fight Christian Leroy Duncan versus Edmund Shabazian Edmund Shabazian just got a win Christian Leroy Duncan won a couple weeks ago on the Gaziev Rosenstrike card. He beat up Claudio Herberio. And yeah, uh, Shabazian beat AJ Dobson, AJ Dobson, who I consider a pretty similar level to Herberio to the kind of level of op- opposition that Leroy Duncan's been fighting. I do think Leroy Duncan would beat Edmund Shabazian. I just didn't like how Edmund looked defensively. He was getting cracked a little bit. And I do consider Leroy Duncan to be a way better striker than... Um, than AJ Dobson, of course. Um, but this is beyond the point of looking on like, oh, who can we give Edmund that he might be able to beat? Like, I don't care anymore. He's past that point. He doesn't look that good anymore. I don't consider him anyone with top 15 hopes or top 15 potential in the future. So yeah, I don't care. He can be used as a stepping stone. It's not saying he would just get ran over, but I do favor Leroy Duncan to win this. And I think it would be a good fight because I'm pretty sure Leroy Duncan is from Manchester. He's definitely from England. I know that. Um, and I think he's from Manchester. So yeah, this would be a good fight for the home crowd or hometown guy. Let's move on though to another fight. Mick Parkin versus Rodrigo Nascimento. Mick Parkin just, you know, he did Mick Parkin things against Muhammad Usman. A whole lot of unranked fat heavyweight behavior, I'll be honest. And don't let the number fool you. Don't let that number 15 rank for Nascimento fool you. He is also a fat fuck and he has no skill. So this would be a perfect fight to make. And because it does technically have a ranking on the line for Mick Parkin, that'd be a good guy to maybe get him into the rankings with. Because, you know, apart from like a title Ivasa, there's not a whole lot of guys there that would be like, yeah, there's a really good chance he beats him. I think Ty would beat him, of course, uh, but because Mick Parkins is not good. Um, but neither is Ty, to be honest. But yeah, Nascimento is just this fat Brazilian fuck. If you haven't seen him fight, I don't blame you. He's coming off a win over Don Tail Mays in just an absolutely atrocious uh, viewing experience. And yeah, do him versus Mick Park. And if Parkin wins, he's got a ranking next to his name. And then you've got two top 15 ranked British heavyweights. You know, the duality of man. You've got Tom Aspinall, absolutely fucking beast unit, fucking fastest guy in the heavyweight division apart from Cyril Garn, power, grappling, all that. And then you just got Mick Parkin. And somehow he might be able to become a ranked fighter. So that would just be very funny. Um, and Nascimento doesn't have a whole lot of power, doesn't have a whole lot of skill. So it would be a winnable fight for Mick Parkin. Um, Parky Porkin, you know, the MMA guru lookalike of the, of the British heavyweight scene. Uh, but let's move on to another fight. Next fight that we have is Oban Elliott versus Kiefer Crosby. Not going to talk about it too much. Oban Elliott's Welsh, Kiefer Crosby's Irish. Uh, cause uh, apart from this, I've just put a bunch of British guys on the card cause obviously it is going to be in England. Uh, but if you want to get some other outside UK slash Ireland, all those kind of guys, you can get these two on there. Obviously, Oban Elliott coming off a win over the GOAT, Val Woodburn. Um, Kiefer Crosby lost to Kevin Gisset, and we haven't seen him other than that. But yeah, make this one happen. Uh, let's move on to the next fight. Sam Patterson versus Song Kenan. Uh, this would be another good fight. I think Sam Patterson could win this, but it does present the the worry because Song Kenan does hit pretty hard, and we have seen Sam Patterson get chinned by Yanel Ashmuz, the Jew, um, don't know why I had to mention that, but I did. But yeah, this would be a good fight, good test for Patterson. Now that he's up at welterweight, I think he might be able to put on a bit of size and not just be a complete frail, lanky fuck. Uh, but let's move on to the next fight. Chris Duncan versus Darius Flowers. Another one to put on the card. Chris Duncan's Scottish, obviously, so you want to get some other representatives. So we've got a bunch of English fighters. I've got Wales now, I've got Ireland, and now we've got Scotland represented on the card. Chuck him against Darius Flowers, both two extremely terrible quality lightweight fighters. Darius Flowers made Michael Johnson actually look decent at fighting, and you just shouldn't be doing that. Uh, Chris Duncan 
Manuel Torres victims coming off a loss to Manuel Torres. Uh, but if, he did beat Yanel Ashmuz, the Jew. Um, but apart from that, he hasn't looked that impressive in his career. So let's move on to another fight. Opener of the prelims, Calvin Lochran versus Chad and Haliga. Uh, Lochran's fighting this weekend. I think he's going to win. Turn him around against Chad and Haliga. That's what it is. You got Ireland again represented on the card. But that is the card done, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As I'll read it out to you one more time. Edwards versus Muhammad. Uh, Aspinall versus Blades, Page versus Neil, Allen versus Chikadze, Pimler versus Moicano, uh, Wood versus Zalal, Grant versus Gutierrez, McCann versus Hughes, Duncan versus Shabazian, Parkin versus Nascimento, Elliott versus Crosby, Patterson versus Canan, Duncan versus Flowers, and Lochran versus Anhaliga. That'll do it. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.